let me let me give you a quick summary about what we have uh, talked about. So basically, that uh, in the in the in the uh, the structure wise, you need to know the uh, so here we have the structure and the function. Structure wise, you need to know the blood flow structure. So that's this size uh, from the afferent afferent arterial to glomerular capillary, efferent arterial, peritubule, and uh, renal vein. In the structure wise of the tubule, you need to know this structure, glomerulus, proximal, loop valley, distal, collecting tubule, collecting ducts. So that's a structure. And the function, functional wise, you need, to, you need to know that in the blood, vest, blood flow, the function occur in these two capillary beds. In the glomerular capillary, the function is to conduct the filtration. The peritubial capillary beds, the function is to provide the reabsorption and the secretion. And in, in this uh, uh, tubule, uh, the function wise, in this glomerulus, um, the function is to provide the filtration. And here we talked, even though we didn't record, that filtration is controlled by two force. The major force is the hydroxyl pressure. And hydroxyl pressure basically is the flu pressure coming from our blood pressure. It in counter, the, an, another counteract force is the osmotic pressure from the blood, uh, from the capillary that will draw blood draw the fluid back to our blood. But that force is lower than the hydroxyl pressure. So overall, we have these two, hydroxyl pressure minus the osmotic pressure and the, that summation, the, the, the net force is called filtration pressure. So we have the positive filtration pressure to push the fluid from the capillary into the Bowman space. So that filtration, and the filtration basically filtered everything uh, uh, that is uh, monomer or smaller than monomer. And following that is this proximal convoluted tubule, and that proximal convoluted tubule has a function summarized here. So basically that reabsorb 100% of glucose and amino acids. It also reabsorb 85% of bicarbonate. Bicarbonate is important as a buffer system. When we reabsorb one bicarbonate, we secrete one hydrogen. So if our body bicarbonate level is low, it means that we didn't secrete, we didn't throw out enough hydrogen. And that is a sign, that's an indication of the uh, acidosis, a type of acidosis and that's called the metabolic acidosis. So that's these two portion. And the following that we have the loop of Handy. Uh, loop of Handy has two segments, uh, descending limb and ascending limb. Descending limb is permeable to water. Uh, by permeable to, to, to water, it means that uh, water can be reabsorbed. It reabsorbs 20% of the water. And uh, uh, following that, uh, the ascending limb, and following the ascending limb, the whole tubule is basically impermeable to water. And uh, only, only, only when the person can secrete, can produce a uh, normal level of the ADH, uh, otherwise this whole segment is impermeable to water. This whole segment is impermeable to water. And uh, because salts are reabsorbed, this urine become diluted and uh, become diluted and uh, the person will have to pee very regularly because that diluted water and a lot of fluid will have to be uh, uh, pee out. But ADH um, helping us to act on the collecting tubule and the collecting ducts to reabsorb this water. And so it can concentrate it, our urine 
to reduce the amount of urine to be pee out. So that quickly summarizes everything. Um, and then loop of Handy, following that loop of Handy is the macula densa. So this macula densa is the way that kind of like uh, the, the nephron is designed that it leaves the blood loop of Handy and uh, by coming back to the, to reach the location of the uh, glomerular capillary. So this is kind of like a, a, a a, a, a physical connection of that tubule with the blood vessel. And that, that provides the opportunity that if there's anything wrong with the tubule, it can tell the blood vessel to do some adjustment. And a common adjustment that the tubule will send to the blood vessel is the filtration situation. So if the filtration is low, say GFR is low, uh, we will have low flow here, low flow here. And that low flow will be detected by the macula densa. And the macula densa will then cause the increase, cause the increase of the blood pressure, blood pressure increase in order to regain that filtration pressure to regain the filtration rate. And then the way it does is that uh, there are several ways. One is that it detects the, the amounts in, the, in that tubule. Uh, and the, 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 main com, the, the main mechanism to detect is to detect the salt. So if, the, if here it detects a low salt, then it will trigger this artery, arterial uh, endothelium cells. Uh, one type of that endothelium cell is called juxtaglomerular cells to release raining. And by releasing raining, we learn about this raining angiotensin II pathway. That raining will convert angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1 and then eventually lead to angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 itself is vessel constrictor that cause TPR, total peripheral resistance increase. It can also trigger the release of the ADH and the ADH can help us to reabsorb water. So water reabsorption will lead to venous return increase, cause the cardiac output increase, so CO increase. TPRCO, we know that blood pressure, BP equals CO times TPR. So we can increase the blood pressure. By increasing the blood pressure, it will will here by increasing the blood pressure it will increase in the hydroxyl pressure to push the fluid through that glomerular capillary to increase the filtration pressure and that can increase the filtration rate to increase the GFR so that's how our uh, that macula densa serve an important role to adjust our filtration condition. So it only influences the filtration in the glomerulus? It basically affects globally, not just that. As we learned that it actually released the cause, the consequence is not just focal, just locally. The reaction is entire body because once running is released and your attention to is very has a lot of effects it's not just local area but your whole body blood pressure will increase okay and that's before it gets to the distal convoluted tubule that's right that's before that so it's right here so it's before that uh, 
it before it go to the distal, uh, it detect it and the send signal back, it increased the pressure. So everything hopefully will regain back to normal. Any questions? So in a way that this, this uh, nephron, if we have the opportunity to like, do the treatment or anything, this earlier portion is very critical. That proximal reabsorb everything that's needed in the body. And uh, that basically play a role in the uh, diabetes uh, mellitus. Um, because if glucose is not 100% reabsorbed, it's gonna remain in the urine. This is also the uh, area that we reabsorb everything. We reabsorb 65% of the salt, 65% water, 85% uh, bicarbonate, and, uh, and then rub of handy. Uh, there are a lot of uh, 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 like uh, uh, drugs acts on this area. And then macrodensa. Uh, macrodensa is important design that tubule see the glomerular capillary again. And that is how that physical connection to provide that proximity to allow this, the information delivered from the macrodensa into the uh, arterial cells to release running and the, the sub consequence is the entire body's uh, blood pressure increase. Any questions? I want to, so this figure, we see this one over and over again. And today we complete it. The, mean, the reason I say that is that everything, this running and your tension to pathway all begin by the kidney, all begin by the nephron, and the basically all begin by the macular densa, this area. This is called glomerular uh, tubular, tubular to glomerular feedback, uh, sensing the back to the glomerular capillary. And uh, all begin from there. And uh, as we show before, we talked that to trigger this reaction, there are three stimulus. One is the sympathetic reaction that we know that if the person is sympathetic reacted, it can trigger it to produce raining. Another one is the low blood pressure. Uh, so we, we learned this in the cardiovascular system that if the blood pressure is low, then kidney can detect it release running and then have that consequence to bring back the blood pressure right here. TPR increase, CO increase, blood pressure increase. The one last thing we didn't talk about is this one. Salt delivered to the distal tubule. So that's what we learned today. Salt is right here. Because when everything filtered, if that filtration is low, then there will be low salt here. And uh, even though that 65% is, is reabsorbed, another 35% remaining, but if the whole amount is low, there will be low salt here. And uh, that low salt will trigger the release of raining because macular dense are gonna detect it and then we'll tell the juxtaglomerular cells to release training. And so that is the third stimulus to trigger this reaction. Uh, three of them are the, all the three are the sympathetic reaction, low blood pressure, and the low salt detected by the uh, macular densa. Any questions?
Sorry. So that is the loop of a handy. Then following that is this thought. This thought uh, reabsorb another about five percent of the salt, uh, and then uh, we actually then then let's just continue. Not, not, there is one one drug X on it, but since we are not talking about drug here, so just remember that this is the region that basically reabsorbs salt, uh, distal, and then the major portion is that macula densa. And then following that is the collecting tubule and the collecting duct. Here we have two stories to talk about. Uh, one is about aldosterone. The other one is about ADH. So in this region, this is the segment affected by the aldosterone and the ADH. So we will learn these two functions here. Do you guys remember aldosterone? Yes. Yes. Thank you so much. Sodium, potassium. Where is secreted? The what is or where? Where? At the thalamus. Uh, aldosterone is secreted from where? The pituitary. Yes. Adrenal cortex. Adrenal cortex. Yeah. Yeah, adrenal cortex. Adrenal cortex has three layer. GFR, GFR. Uh, G is mineral corticoids, and the one of the mineral corticoid is the aldosterone. So that's. And the ADH, ADH is secreted from where? Pituitary. Pituitary, that's right. So, so in, in this region, uh, one cell is called the principal cell. This principal cell has a function to secrete potassium and the reabsorb salt. Uh, so in the tubular side, this urine, you can see that it's yellow, it's urine. In the tubular side, it has this called a renal outer medullary potassium channel, RMK. It's secret, remove the, the potassium. And uh, also has this index channel, it's called epithelium Na sodium channel, inact channel, to reabsorb salt. So uh, if, if as, as we, it was earlier, like last time, you mentioned about that high salt diet, if the high salt diet has this uh, salt remaining in the tubule, that salt will provide that concentration gradient to push the salt back to our body, and even not high salt, a little bit salt, it will push the salt back to our body. And here, the body, the cells, these principal cells, every cell has low salt inside of the cell. And on the basolateral side, we have the regular like sodium potassium ATPase to pump the salt back to our body, pump the potassium into the cell. So high, high potassium here, uh, high sodium in the extracellular space. And so that is three major channels located in the principal cells. Uh, and uh, and uh, what the, so regularly, typically, this region will cause the secretion of the potassium, reabsorb the sodium and uh, uh, potassium, potassium here, potassium will come here and the secrete out, and the pee out. Sodium will go into the body and the pump back to our body. So that basically is kind of like a cycle here. The aldosterone, here is the aldosterone, has a function to boost 
this cycling. So it will be X on the mineral corticoid receptor. MR is the uh, mineral, mineral corticoid receptor because aldosterone is a mineral corticoid. And then it will boost the activity of ENAC, ROMK, and uh, sodium potassium ADPS. And the consequence is that it will enhance the sodium reabsorption. It will enhance the potassium secretion. So that's the function of the aldosterone. It will cause that. It will cause the it will enhance the sodium reabsorption and the potassium secretion. So now you know the aldosterone function right here. So two things you need to remember. One is that it acts on the principal cells. They have the term here, the principal cells located in the collecting tubule collecting ducts. And uh, the second thing you need to know that its function is to cause the sodium reabsorption and the potassium secretion. So that's the function of the aldosterone. Just a review that aldosterone coming from the adrenal cor cortex, adrenal glands, adrenal cortex. Adrenal cortex has three layer, GFR, G is the region to secrete the mineral corticoids. Aldosterone is the one of it, the major one. And it acts on the nephron to act on the mineral corticoid receptor. And the function is to, is to cause the sodium reabsorption. The, absorption and the potassium secretion. So that's a function. Any questions? So we learned this one already. Aldosterone can also be triggered by the angiotensin too. And, uh, and another one is ADH. So two story. One is the aldosterone story. The other one is ADH. So we, we actually, so ADH's function is to open up a channel in this area. So water, so if there's no ADH, say here is no ADH. This one is a figure with no ADH, no ADH. With no ADH, after the uh, ascending limb of the loop handy is impermeable to water. It only reabsorbs salt, but not water. So you can see that urine is diluted. Urine has 300 or 500 here, uh, uh, osmol, mini osmol, and it's all diluted. When we pee out, it becomes only 60 mini osmol. In the very earlier, like, uh, lecture, we try to calculate all this osmolarity, and that is a purpose, it's right here. Our blood has about 300 mini osmo, as we wish to know that, mini osmo, and so plasma has that, filtered through, we have the 300 mini, mini osmo in the proximal convoluted tubule, and, uh, and that is, it will be diluted from the ascending limb if we don't have the ADH, it will be continually diluted to pee out. And the ADH opens up the water channel to allow water to be reabsorbed. So that's the function of the ADH. So ADH is secreted from the uh, posterior pituitary glands. It's also regulated by draining angiotensin system. And the function is to so this is the location where ADH is secreted. 
and the function is to act on the collecting tubule and the collecting ducts to reabsorb water. So this is the collecting tubule, collecting ducts, ADH. ADH is also called the AVP, so that's the same thing. This is ADH. Will act on it, and that will cause these vesicles to move. These vesicles contains a corporeal channel. Basically, that's the water channel. So it will allow water channel to allow water to go through, and that provide the channel to for our body to reabsorb water. Uh, so ADH's function is to increase water reabsorption. If we don't have the ADH, the patient will have diluted urine and uh, the patient will have to uh, go pee very regularly. It's called the diabetes insipidus and that is caused by the low ADH. So that's any questions. So in the in this uh, in very quick summary about this region, this collecting tubule, collecting ducts, only two story. One is the aldosterone story. The other one is ADH. Two things you need to know: their location, where they are secreted, and their their function. Aldosterone function is sodium reabsorption, potassium secretion. ADH's function is water reabsorption. And then, then what's that? Then we talk about that, we talk about that. The very last one is about urination. So we have this urine, it will be stored in the bladder. Now, if the bladder will get, it's the region that's stored. We produce this urine all the time but the bladder will store this urine. And uh, the next thing is to release it from the body. And uh, uh, the bladder um, uh, urination controlled by our nervous system. Uh, so it includes the bladder controlled by the sympathetic, by the autonomic. So bladder is controlled by the autonomic autonomic nervous system include the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. Another region, so autonomic is not that we can control. What we can control is the voluntary nervous system. The voluntary nervous system control the, uh, the sphincter of the urethral. So here is the urethral. We control here is a sphincter. It contains the muscle that our voluntary nervous system can control. So basically that when it's filled, it will trigger the sympathetic nervous system. Uh, sorry, it will trigger the parasympathetic nervous system to cause the contraction of the bladder. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and then we will feel that we need to pee. And if we are ready, then we voluntarily control that uh, sphincter to allow uh, peeing. So bladder is controlled as sympathetic and the parasympathetic, sympathetic relax the bladder so, so it can contain more. Parasympathetic contract the bladder to squeeze it, to let it pee. And the sphincter is the, uh, 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 muscle control the urethra to allow the the urine to going out. So that's the end of it. Any questions? If not, then that ends everything. Now, can I go over? Sure, sure. So let's go over this area: afferent, efferent, and the glomerular capillary. 
So here is about the blood. So that's this one here. Coming in, coming out, and coming next to the tubule, and then coming out. Along this arterial, it only provides the pressure. Then is to collect the blood back to our systemic circulation. Where we see this filtration, reabsorption, secretion, this all happens in the capillary because only in the capillary that it has single layer of the endothelium cells. So it has the structure available, capable for substance exchange. And substance exchange is a general term. Here in the urinary system, the substance exchange include the filtration, reabsorption, and the secretion. And so in the glomerular capillary, it's for the filtration. In the peritubial capillary, here we will have the reabsorption. That's how our substance, like glucose, like amino acids, can come back to our body only if that vessel wall is thin enough to allow that. In the artery, in the vent, the vessel wall is too thick. So here in the peritubial capillary, it can allow that reabsorption. It can allow that secretion, hydrogen, basically. Two things are gonna be secreted, hydrogen and the potassium. Only two things, only the major two things secreted. Uh, from our blood into the tubule is these two things. Hydrogen secretion is, is, is to exchange for a reabsorption of the bicarbonate. Potassium secretion is regulated by the aldosterone. So that secretion here. Reabsorption here, glucose, amino acids are reabsorbed into the blood. And when they absorb into the blood, they have to go through the capillary. And here only two capillary, glomerula, that's for filtration, peritubule, and that's a capillary to reabsorb all this important substance. Does it make sense now? Sorry for the noise, guys. I didn't realize I was on, on mute. Um, the so everything after the pro, the proximal dis, uh, the proximal convoluted tubule, and after that is going to be the peritubular capillaries? You know what? Proximal convoluted tubule is actually part of that peritubular capillary. So okay. proximal convoluted tubule is in the urine site. So here we have the proximal lupendi distal. These are all nephron. But along this nephron, we have the blood. So just right next to the proximal convoluted tubule, we have the capillary. Otherwise, when, when things absorbed into our body, they have to come to the blood in order to go back to our body. So here we have, so this is the urine, and then right next to that, we have the blood vessel to take this one back to our body. And this blood vessel are the peritubule capillary. So here is the, yeah, thank you. Or through here, we have the capillary to take everything back to our body. And this capillary is called peritubule capillary. Yep. Any that other question? Sense. Say again? That makes sense. Thank you. I'm glad to hear that. All right, then. 